Hello everyone, I'm all weddinged and honeymooned and now I'm back on YouTube and if you did see my last video, I mentioned in it that I was now on the hunt for a new car and so that is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. I've also been super busy over the last few weeks launching my new podcast. It's called All Four Wheels, I've got some super huge plans for it actually and the first episode is now live for you to watch and listen to. It's on YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I'll leave all the details in the description below. We're actually trying to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, so if you do get a chance, I'd really appreciate it if you could go over and subscribe. I'll leave a link up here for ease. Anyway, on to the important business then and a new car. Just to be clear, for those of you that might be wondering, the Jag isn't going anywhere. This will be in addition to that. But five grand seems to be an interesting budget. You seem to be able to get almost anything for that sort of money. However, anything you can get is likely to be quite poor. But having said that, I do think there are some hidden gems which I want to talk to you about today. I'm going to talk you through a few options, but I'd mainly like you to comment below your ideas. And actually, if you don't like me and you enjoy witnessing the unfolding of automotive financial ruin, well, now's your chance to pick the worst option and slip it into the ballot box. Comment below. Okay, so at five grand, there's some obvious Jags that come into sight. You can get an XF or an XK8, for an example. You can actually scrape into an SV8 XF for that money, which is probably the one I'd go for. That or a later five litre, but they're out of the question for now. The 2.7 diesel, although I've heard good things about it, it's not really for me. And to be honest, Sadiq Khan's hilarious ULEZ expansion in London sort of puts anything that's pre-2015 diesel out the question for me now too. XK8, although gorgeous, and although I fell for an absolutely heart-melting British Racing Green example on Auto Trader last week, which I think is now gone, looks can be deceiving. I think at five grand, you're, you're just asking for trouble with one of those. Not forgetting the XJ, of course, that does present great value for money as well, but I think, truthfully, if I was getting another Luxo barge, which I might do, I'd probably choose something else first. And on that, if this was a video talking about a 15 or 20 grand budget, then uh, I would be buying without question a Bentley Continental Flying Spur. Bucket list car for me, I've always wanted one of those. There's a host of BMWs that can be had for under five grand as well that are definitely worth having, such as like an E46 330 Coupe or even a 325, or any of the six cylinder engines actually. They're all wonderful, in manual or automatic. You could probably get a relatively nice and low mileage E39 5 Series as well. They're pretty gorgeous cars and I think they're coming to their own a little bit now. Can't ignore the Z4 either. Still plenty of those that can be had for under 5k and at this time of year it makes a lot of sense. But for me one BMW that I'm struggling to ignore is the 6 Series. For the budget they can be had in either coupe or convertible guise and also with a big juicy V8 engine which sounds very tempting doesn't it although the styling is questionable isn't it the back looks like that star wars character with with the eyes the uh, jar jar binks but i'm weird because the very fact it's ugly makes me really like it there's various ones of these six series and auto trailer that i've been looking at and yeah you can basically get yourself you can get a 630 which is the six cylinder or you can get a 645 uh, which is the earlier v8 pretty much the same block or near as the block that was in my first Range Rover, I think. Speaking of it, we should talk about the elephant in the room, shouldn't we? The big boxy L322 shaped elephant in the room. The elephant that's readily available in all shapes, trim levels and sizes for under 5K. Of course, I'm talking about the Range Rover. <laughs> but before we do discuss the Range Rover, let me just share a quick word from today's video sponsor. Let me say thank you to Private Internet Access VPN for sponsoring today's video. A VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and the best way I can think to describe what it is, is imagine you're standing on a busy street with lots of people around you and you want to have a private conversation with someone. You can step into a secret tunnel which is secluded and quiet where no one can hear you and essentially that's what a VPN does with your data on the internet. When you use a VPN, your internet traffic is encrypted and tunneled through a secure server, which is in a different location. That means that your online activities are hidden from prying eyes, whether that be government agencies, your internet service provider, or even hackers. So in other words then, a VPN is like a secret passage that protects your online privacy and security 
while allowing you to access the internet from anywhere in the world. For me though, having a VPN is particularly useful when traveling outside of this country, because I love to use iPlayer, specifically at the moment because they've got all of the Top Gear episodes on there and you're unable to watch iPlayer when you're outside of the UK. However, when I use private internet access VPN, I can change my server location to anywhere in the world, meaning no matter where I am in the world, I can change my server location to the UK and watch Top Gear. I know that you might expect such a great product to be expensive, but the best part is by clicking my link, you can get yourself 86% off. So that equates to just £1.57 per month, and you're actually getting four months for completely free too. But I promise you, once you've started using private internet access VPN, you won't ever want to go back. So thank you once again to PIA VPN for sponsoring today's video. Okay, Range Rover. Well, let me be firstly totally honest with you. Out of all the cars I can see and imagine buying for 5K, the only one I want to buy is a Range Rover. There is just something about them, isn't there? Something that I, I don't think any auto journalist or YouTuber has ever quite been able to work out. Stockholm Syndrome is the best I can come up with to describe it, except the hostage is your wallet. But it still just doesn't make sense, does it? I think truthfully, it's got to be the way that they make you feel when you're driving one. They just make you feel untouchable and safe and completely secure. And it's the only car I've ever experienced where I'd regularly arrive at my intended destination and just not want to get out. For reference, I've owned a 2003 petrol V8 Range Rover and then a 2008 TD V8. And so, although my experience is relatively limited, I've, I've definitely got the bug. And in fact, there's not a day that goes by where I don't say to myself or even my wife that it was a mistake selling particularly that first 2003 Jiveny Green Range Rover. Let's just look on here though quickly. I've got, I mean, look at this. This one here, 3,750 quid. It's a 2006 V8, which means it's the later Jaguar V8, which is actually very rare and the one you want to go for. 140,000 miles, but pff, mileage is sort of insignificant on these. And this one, interestingly, has had the rust done on the arches. So the bodywork's pretty much sorted on this. Great service history. It's got an MOT until February 2024. Ugh, it seems like such a good idea, doesn't it? There's also this one on eBay, which makes me tingle. It's that green colour with a dark sort of caramel cream interior. It's perfect, like royal spec, 2,750 quid. But then you go online and you look at the MOT history and you notice that there's an advisory with a suspension component, or I think in this, this one's case, there's a brake line that's been an advisory for the past eight years. And so when you see that, you've just got to think, well, obviously, what's the owner been like or what have the owners been like that have had this car before? If there's been an advisory that's not been sorted for eight years, then clearly it's not been looked after or whoever's owned it certainly hasn't had the money to maintain it properly. So it's 2,750 quid, but I guarantee before, before you could even insure it, you'll have spent that again. It's like when you're completely ravenous and famished and you see a big McDonald's sign and you order absolutely everything on the menu and somehow manage to eat it all, but then immediately you feel terrible afterwards. You vow to the Bible that you'll never touch a McDonald's again or so much as look at the golden arches but then the next week you find yourself in the same situation. <laughs> That's just sort of how it feels. I've said it before with Range Rovers, it, it's like crack. You, you know it's so bad for you, but you just can't get enough. There's loads of other cars as well. One that I've always fancied and that can be had in this budget, Porsche Cayenne. But I think if there's one example of a car that you shouldn't buy cheaply, it's probably a Porsche Cayenne. But what on earth is this? No, that can't be right. 65,000 miles. Oh, hang on a second, I actually got to buy this. Oh, that's embarrassing. I got so excited by seeing a black KN with a tan interior for two and a half grand with 65,000 miles that I forgot to read the description and have now noticed it says noisy tappets as the first line in the description. That would probably explain it. Another car that I really missed that I owned before is the Porsche Boxster. And again, you can get those for 5K and especially when the sun starts coming out, you do think also, SLKs, Mercedes SLKs. There's this one on here. Look at this, just under five grand. It's green with a cream interior. It's an SLK 280. It's got the seven speed automatic gearbox, but 
you know, what, what a car for the money. Isn't that, isn't that a pro I mean, that is gorgeous. And while we're on the subject of Mercedes, the CL, that sort of 2001, I think through, well, gosh, I don't know when they made the first generation to, probably 2008, that sort of funny shaped Mercedes they made in the early noughties, you can have, I mean, a CL500, a nice one for five grand, which just seems like utterly fantastic value. There's even a few CL600s which have the V12 kicking around maybe just over just over the five grand budget. But yeah, while we're at it, I mean, look at this. This is a 2006 BMW Z4. It's advertised for 5,750. Uh, it's the later three litre SI, which is the one you want, really. It's the sort of best of the, was it E85 generation, unless you're getting a Z4M. Yeah, black, red leather interior, manual gearbox, 120,000 miles, but that's nothing for these engines. Just, I mean, you can't, you just can't really get better than that. I'm sorry, you can't. On UK roads, there's no sense of humour anymore with, with speed limits and speeding and stuff, so that's all the power you're ever going to need. And they're, you know, they're pretty good round track as well, those Z4s. Here we go, look, back to the 6 Series. This one here, V8 convertible, red leather interior, black exterior. I've obviously got a thing for BMWs with a red interior and a black exterior. It's got interesting wheels on it. I'm not sure what they're called, but I kind of like them. Again, I think, I think they're kind of hideous. And for some reason, I just find that sexy. I don't know why, something's wrong with me. Let's go on good old Facebook Marketplace. I think you can make a whole video on Facebook Marketplace about just some of the stuff you see on there. So there's another six series here with a video, 630i convertible, three and a half grand. And it looks a million dollars as well. Green roof. These 2006 generation Mercedes S classes are all over the place as well for under 5K, which for someone like me who likes the big old saloon cars is very tempting. Guards red Porsche Boxster. Oh, with the hard top though. Well, yeah, I guess you can take it off. I just personally hate the way those hard tops look. Range Rover Sport. I've always fancied a Range Rover Sport. Never ever, never even driven one. You can get the early Range Rover Sport gen for well under 5k now as well and relatively okay ones but famous last words that's an interesting looking car stunning prom dress or i could have a 3l322 facebook marketplace is a very very strange place so you can see my predicament here there's lots of cars that can be had for this money and what to choose what a great problem to have but I'd love to hear your input. The other car as well is the Lexus LS460. Bit of a luxury old barge, but there's a few of those kicking around for five grand, and that is a fantastic car for the money. Has every possible toy you can imagine on it. And something I've not really seen, well, you, don't, you just generally don't see them that much. So quite a quirky and interesting car, I thought. But yes, comment below what you think? What am I missing? Is there a car that you're thinking of right now screaming at the screen that I've just forgot to mention? Maybe I've already got it on here and just haven't spoken about it, but I would love to know. So please do comment below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this slightly different video and I'll see you well, probably next week for a video with the Jag. So stay tuned. Thanks again. Take care and see you very, very soon.